And now, another moment in the history of Stafford County. When we think of George Washington, this is what usually comes to mind. You know, revolutionary leader, father of our country, statesman. And yet, we all know that George Washington wasn't born in a saddle atop his trusted steeds Nelson and Blueskin with a shiny saber rattling at his side. His beginning was a bit more humble than that, as were the things he did as a child. George Washington was born on February 11, 1731, on Pope's Creek Estate near what is today Colonial Beach in Westmoreland County. But everybody knows he spent his boyhood right here in Stafford County at Ferry Farm. Well, my father brought us here. Uh, we, uh, at one point, we were living in another property of the family, which is in Huntington Creek, which everyone knows now is Mount Vernon. Uh, we lived there briefly. And then about the time I was six years old, my father decided to locate the family back here to this farm, where I remained pretty much the rest of my formable years growing up here. So the young George didn't arrive at Ferry Farm, which the family called Home Farm, and everyone else called Washington Farm until he was six years old. But here's where he remained until his early 20s. George wasn't sentimental about his boyhood home despite having spent over 15 years here. I mean, this was in large the uh, King's Highway at the time. So uh, lots of traffic north and south. Visitors, coaches, tradesmen came through here. And also, if you you're on the banks of one of the busiest harbors during the colonial period, which is Fredericksburg. Lots of trade went on here. Of course, we know that George would later take to surveying as his vocation of choice and would spend his early 20s practicing it, but we'll come back to that. An interesting question is, what did George do between arriving at Home Farm in 1738 and leaving nearly 15 years later as a young man? Surely, young people in Colonial Virginia didn't spend their time being just little adults. In her book, Colonial Virginians at Play, Jane Carson tells us that amusement among these early Virginians was usually associated with the outdoors, while indoors, pastimes were simple and social. Plus the outlying fields, you know, there's lots of game in the forest, so we made our own entertainment here on the farm when, there wasn't, when the chores were done, and there were a good many chores to be done here on the farm. Except for horse racing and cockfighting, there were no organized sports in which the young George Washington could take an interest. But that doesn't mean that George took no part in the outdoors. <laughs> well, I can only speak from my own childhood, but uh, certainly uh, growing up here on the riverbanks of the Rappahannock uh, provided much entertainment as well as leisure. Uh, me and my brothers and some of the other neighborhood boys would often uh, gather along the banks where we would swim, skip rocks, there used to be an abundance of grapevines that grew up and down the banks of the Rappahannock, so one can imagine how much fun those were. Uh, the fields nearby, uh, of course, offered opportunities to hunt, lots of fishing, so there was lots of outdoor amusement to keep us entertained when we weren't doing our chores, mind you, which there was a good abundance of those as well. Unlike the young men of today, many of the activities George and his friends did as pastimes were practical preparation for adult life. Uh, actually, fencing I did take on when I became a, a young adjutant. I felt it was part of the uh, uh, becoming an officer. So it's clear enough that young men in Colonial Virginia spent time developing the skills they'd need to be frontier men later. But what did they do for fun? This game is called Nine Pins. I know most of you are probably used to bowling and you have ten pins that are set up in a triangle, but this was the original game uh, that bowling took the place of, you have three straight rows of three pins. You can uh, bowl with the ball either to the side of the pins or you can bowl it into one of the corners. But at that time they did not yet have the ten pins with the triangular shape. Of course, just like today, it wasn't always a nice day for playing outside when George Washington was growing up on Ferry Farm. When children had some spare time on their hands and the weather was bad out, they often resorted to playing parlor games. The game of forfeits was a favorite parlor game during George's time. In forfeits, players forfeit a personal belonging into a pile on the floor. The object is then held over the owner's head and he or she must do some stunt or act in order to get back the item. Uh, those games were a lot of fun, you know. You take someone's personal belongings, perhaps, and then you would uh, have them, it's like a guessing game. 
But everything was not always fun and games for children like George Washington either. Sometimes you had to participate in things adults wanted you to do. Well, those were basically afforded to me by uh, my brother Lawrence, you know. Uh, the Fairfax is there at Belvoort, where they live. There was always a ball or a dance going on there, or a good barbecue. And we Virginians, we love our horse racing, and I always loved horses. I've been riding horses as long as I can remember. In keeping with the theme of childhood as preparation for adulthood, colonial Virginians also provided their offspring with an education in courtship. Um, courtships were uh, usually, uh, well, they were very, uh, not too many opportunity without the permission, because keep in mind, here in Virginia, our plantations were far out and spread apart from one another. So the only time one could probably have the opportunity to see the opposite sex uh, would be at a ball or a dance at someone's plantation home. If courtship and marriage were not particularly on George Washington's mind during his years at Fairy Farm, preparation for making a living certainly were. Perhaps at my time, the formal education for someone here in my situation was not as, uh, as uh, good as someone raised on a plantation. I was kind of deprived of going to England to school like my brother's Lawrence and Austin that after my father passed. So my education was very limited. There was a school here in town for the boys and girls and my mother seemed to it that my sister and I went and my brother Jack. But it was only for a few years. Washington never obtained more than the equivalent of an elementary school education. He was not highly literate but showed a talent for mathematics. Under the care of his half-brother Lawrence following his father's death in 1742, Washington learned trigonometry and surveying, which was typical for boys his age. But it was there, though. I learned that I had a gift for numbers and arithmetic. And that was how I was able to deploy that ability with my uh, first career, which was surveying. In 1748, the neighboring family of Fairfax and Belvoir sent 16-year-old Washington on a month-long surveying trip to Shenandoah Valley. Surveying provided George with decent wages and travel opportunities. But being a surveyor also allowed me the opportunity to depict the terrain that I would later use for my own benefit when I became general of the army uh, during this revolution. And uh, I was able to identify good land and bad terrain to fight battles and, and, and such. And that also always proved to my benefit. Washington's appreciation for the value of land grew during his time as a surveyor, and he was later certified by the College of William & Mary as the official Culpeper County Surveyor. Washington's brother Lawrence contracted tuberculosis while the youthful George was still under his care. He passed away in 1752 after Washington accompanied him on a trip to the island of Barbados. And so, Washington inherited the Mount Vernon estate at the young age of 20, shortly after Lawrence's death. Well, it was quite a responsibility again, and I tried to employ everything that I, he was able to counsel me on and, and managing that. It was, a, at first it, it was very overwhelming, as one can imagine, you know, and I, uh, I tried though to um, just to exercise every discipline he ever taught me. And my mother and my father also were good managers. Perhaps, perhaps it may be some genetic there. Prior to his death, Lawrence commanded a local militia in the area near Ferry Farm. Washington was influenced by his brother's time in the military and convinced the government to award him the same post despite having no prior military training. My experience was lied with my surveying. I knew the terrain in the West. And if you, at the time when the French were starting to encroach on the King's uh, claims here in the western part of the Virginia colony in Pennsylvania. I had the knowledge of the terrain and could speak very good to the Burgesses about what the land really was. As we all know, Washington eventually served as commander of the Continental Army in the Revolutionary War. He was also elected the first United States President in 1789 and is considered among the nation's founding fathers. But it all began here, at Ferry Farm in Stafford County, where a young boy came in the wake of his father's untimely death to receive his education in a way fairly typical of other young colonials. And there you have it, in a Stafford Minute.